So Kamala Harris has now chosen her VP candidate by the name of Tim Waltz. He served in the U.S. Army National Guard for 20 years. This guy's a former educator. He's the governor of Minnesota. I mean, this is a guy with an extremely just, just amazing record. She's chosen an amazing VP. She's chosen a great guy. And he honestly eviscerated J.D. Vance. Eviscerated the boy uh, at the rally today absolutely eviscerated jd vance donald trump himself has freaked over the news he went on truth social and lost his goddamn mind the man tweeted out something absolutely insane donnie says this what are the chances that crooked joe biden the worst president in the history of the u.s mind you this is a man who tried to overthrow the united states government this is a man who had admittedly committed fraud this is a man whose supreme court justices are corrupt and have committed basically treason sedition against the united states to aid and abet him in his crimes this man thinks he can accuse anyone anyone of being the worst president in the, in the history of this thing. he thinks he can do that he goes on to say biden whose presidency was unconstitutionally stolen from him by kamabla not sure what that's supposed to even mean barack hussein obama that's it was in all caps i had, I had to do that crazy nancy pelosi shifty adam schiff crying okay it's not even funny anymore like you gotta use of like maybe one or two but you can't like now it just looks sad and unhinged bro trump trump like this you've always looked like a four-year-old but this is just like now i'm demoting you to two-year-old <laughs> crying chuck schumer and others on the lunatic left crashes the democrat national convention and tries to take back the nomination beginning with challenging me to another debate he feels that he made a historically tragic mistake by handing over the u.s presidency a coup you know all you would know all about coups your experience with those to the people in the world he most hates and he wants it back now i'm not even gonna yell that one it's interesting trump brings up the word coup you are experienced with those you would know about that and you're planning another one which we're all aware of by the way i hope the fbi has something in store for your ass so that was trump's you know deranged reaction to kamala harris's amazing chess move i've heard through the grapevine that nancy pelosi is the one behind the scenes moving all these chess pieces on the board which is not hard to believe because Nancy Pelosi is an actual gangster. <laughs> she's an actual gang member. So I'm not surprised she's making cutthroat moves behind the scenes. But let's see the clip of Governor Tim Waltz absolutely eviscerating J.D. Vance. Donald Trump's not fighting for you or your family. He never, he never sat at that kitchen table like the one I grew up at, wondering how we were going to pay the bills. He sat at his country club up in Mar-a-Lago, wondering how he can cut taxes for his rich friends. And I gotta tell you, his running mate shares his dangerous and backward agenda for this country. J.D. Vance literally, literally wrote the foreword for the architect of the Project 2025 agenda. Like all regular people I grew up with in the heartland, J.D. studied at Yale, had his career funded by Silicon Valley billionaires, and then wrote a bestseller trashing that community. Come on! That's not what middle America is. I talked about how conservatives are extremely unsympathetic to the black struggle in black history. And another thing that bothers me is the lack of empathy for anybody. The fact that J.D. Vance writing a book selling out his own people on white people who come from insanely impoverished rural areas in which they have very little working infrastructure i mean this guy portrays himself as like an appalachian guy that comes from like the back of nowhere and you write a whole book denigrating these people and like con like rich like upper class conservatives middle class conservatives eat this up and it's like why is there this culture of on who you are and where you come from to appease the ultra elite? If it's not a Hispanic on their own race to appease conservative whites or a black person on their own race to appease conservative whites, you got a conservative white man shitting on 
white people who come from disadvantaged areas to appease richer white people god damn aren't we a nation of settlers aren't we a nation of descendants of slaves we are a nation of people who don't come from the upper echelons of you know african nations and european nations we're we're a nation of of common folk who built the greatest nation in the world and yet there's this there's this romanticization of elitehood in amongst conservatives whether it's the, a, a hierarchy of race a hierarchy of economics and of course i'm not just discovering this but it really highlights how bad it is when a white man writes a book denigrating poor white folk and like gets big off the book and rich white people enjoy this and lap it up it's like one of the biggest issues i have with conservative ideology is empathy even when i was on the right wing for a while as a as a as a as, a, as a, like a mid in my mid teens and i could never really bring myself to have any sort of hatred for people that, that were a part of the lgbtq community i just i just i couldn't be compelled to care that much about I, I, I never cared about gay marriage. I never cared to try to get in the way of that. I never cared to get in the way of abortion. I just wasn't on track with these things. I can't understand why conservatives and empathy have such a horrible relationship to such an insane extent that even these rich white folk lap up this book written to denigrate white folk who are born in conditions. It blows my mind. It's insane to me. But this is one of the biggest issues I have with conservatism, this this addiction to hierarchy and this person's beneath me and this person's down there. It's insanity. It's crazy. And I got to tell you, I can't wait to debate the guy. That is, if, you, if he's willing to get off the couch and show up. So, <laughs> you see what I did there? This is what we need to see. We need to see Democrats landing low blows. This is what we need. We need to see ruthlessness. No more civil politics. We have to get in the mud and unfortunately do battle with pigs. We have to, unfortunately. You know it, I know it, everyone knows it. This is perfect. Hitting JD Vance where it hurts, taking away the tough guy image of MAGA, reducing them to the weirdos that they are, because they are weird. Trump dances all weird. I don't know what that is. They're weird. Tim Waltz highlighting the oddity of these people's existence is incredibly important. These kinds of petty attacks, humorous attacks, are exactly what's necessary to defeat MAGA. They need to realize they are not a scary force that we fear, but a laughing stock. You have to laugh at them. These Trump sexuals are weird. They're not even gay, they're just Trump sexuals. They're odd people. And we have to remind them by la ha ha. That's the only way you defeat these fascists and dictatorship wannabes. These folks who glamorize dictatorships, autocracies, these folks that want that, you have to show them that they are a joke. You have to clown them. Take away that feeling of toughness and 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 uh and and grandiosity they have. They they like to they like the idea that they strike fear into people. That's why they put Project 2025 on the internet. Fear is a part of their strategy. They derive gratification from thinking you're afraid of them. That's why they're stupid enough to sit there and tell the entire country they're going to coup the nation. They're gonna, it's going to be a soft revolution, and it, and it will be bloodless as long as the left allows it to be. These people, are, they're doing this because they derive a sense of gratification and self-assurance from thinking you're afraid of them. Clown them. Laugh at them. They're cornballs. Tucker Carlson's a dork. The man's name is Tucker Carl son how he is even like it breaks my brain every day how any grown man could look at a man named Tucker Carlson who spends half of his life with his mouth open like this who wears a bow tie 
how anyone could look at an individual named Tucker Carlson and think that's a guy whose information and message resonates with me and directs me on the right path is beyond me. Clown these individuals. They are clowns. Trump, him, clown. JD, Couch Vance, clown. Make fun of these people as best you can. This is how you, I, I guarantee you, if we make a big, if we make enough memes and sh** these niggas like it's 2016, it's time to flip the script. It's our time to unleash the memes. It's our time now. It's our time to pop our sh Let's keep it on it. It is. If we can clown these niggas enough before November, a lot of folk ain't going to vote for Trump just off the strength of, I don't want to be weird. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be the laugh, the laughing stock. I'm telling you, bro. Oh, most people in politics are running off of vibes. It's all just vibes. It's all just what I feel in the moment, what the last person told me, make fun of the Trump sexuals. Use this term. Okay, you know what? I just put the Frontier logo on here. All the Frontier boys in this, especially if you Gen Z, use this term, Trump sexual, whenever you can. Just, just say it casually. Just mention it to your friends like, yo, ain't these motherfuckers Trump sexuals? Any form of mockery, joning, clowning, whatever you got to do, make fun of these MAGA niggas. Don't, Trump sexuals, excuse me. Don't stop, pause. Don't stop, okay? Keep clowning them. This is an incredibly important part of winning, okay? Memory, clownery, you know this is true. This has been an effective strategy for them in 2016. We need as, as much memory and buffoonery on our side as much as possible everyone knows it <laughs> i gotta tell you pointing out just an observation of mine that I, I that i made i just have to say it you know it you feel it these guys are creepy and yes just weird as hell that's what you see that's what you see So you know what's out there, so say it with me. We aren't going back. We're going back. We are not going back. We are not going back. Because we are going to be unburdened by what has been, okay? Trump is going to jail. He's going to jail, hopefully. Um, the real, uh, unfortunately, realistically, the only way to save the Republic is for every one of his aiders and abettors to go to prison, which means six members of the Supreme Court and a lot of members of Congress. That's a little bit heavier than just Trump, but we all know it's true. In summation, this pick is perfect. Waltz is funny. He knows how to roast. Either he knows how to roast or Kamala Harris's Gen Z team. Who at someone in there knows how to disrespect? Okay. We got to show Trump he's not the only funny person in the room. We could get active. We could really we could really get active with him for real. Like, let's keep it 100. Use whatever you got to use. Dishonest Don, deceptive Don, duplicitous Don. I thought I came up with those recently. Bro, take whatever nicknames y'all want, whatever nicknames you hear me use, any insults you hear, me, Trump sexuals, spam the meme the shit, go with it. Don't enjoy this stuff like bro we really gotta make fun out of this we have to we gotta make more normies want to get involved in liberal politics and how we do that is by making it fun i'm sorry but this is the vibes the in the words of kanye west the vibes is back i mean i'm just keeping it 100 the vibes is back you, we gotta utilize vibes the time for facts that'll be on the debate field the battlefield but right now before outside of debates we gotta utilize vibes and this is how you do it we gotta utilize vibes insults clownery buffoonery this is the way this was an amazing pick uh, a perfect pick by harris from what i can tell so far the man has an amazing record he served our country not just as a member of the military but also a public servant this man's a governor this guy's got jokes even kamala was trying not to laugh bro if we if we move this if we handle this right y'all saw trump was over there panicking he was like seven nicknames in one paragraph he's he's over there 
He's losing it. The, the McDonald's grease slipping off the, the screen. He in a bad spot. Just keep it on it. He in a bad spot. No amount of visits from Netanyahu and Orban can save you from what we got going on. Just keep it on it. Trump in a bad way. He over there panicking. JD, does he even talk? Every time I see him talk, he just says some wild, lame shit. Is he even... Okay. Disregard what I'm about to say, but I don't even think JD Vance is a real person. I'm gonna keep it 100. That he was made in a mother lab. Is that a real person? JD Vance, y'all want me to believe JD Vance is a real person? Three different names. He can't make a joke to save his life. He has no charisma. Somehow he managed to become VP. I don't know how. I guess he's just white and male and he's willing to shit on poor white males. So we're just gonna put him in the VP. It's crazy. He doesn't even do it. He just breathes. He's just white and breathes air. Somebody, he did DEI. He just DEI. Get a nigga like, okay, get Vivek. Get Vivek. I don't even like Vivek. I think he's racist. But like, at least he's got some kind of charisma, some kind of energy, some kind of some. JD Vance is just white. But see, Trump can't choose Vivek because it'll tank his fucking campaign. A brown man named Ramaswamy, VP? Oh no, we can't have that. Let's pick the guy who can't elicit any energy out of a crowd. Who's white though? That'll pacify the audience though. Trump is in a bad spot. He's spiraling. He's he's out of nicknames. He's out of stock. He's he can't even do it. That's pretty much every single one he's ever come up with. I think maybe Lying Ted and Little Marco is missing, but come on. Well, that's because those two bow down and bent the knee to Trump. They're they're busy, you know, kissing the ring. But Trump is spiraling. He's over there yelling and screaming on Truth Social. No one's in there, but he's like he's like an inmate in solitary confinement just screaming at the walls. He's, he's losing his mind. This is a perfect state of affairs. You couldn't ask for a better outcome today. I've, again, I want to credit the Harris campaign for this. I also heard Nancy Pelosi is the one behind the scenes orchestrating everything, which, if true, is so gangster because Nancy Pelosi's a gangster. It, bro. Watch the Frontline PBS interview on Nancy Pelosi. She's a G, okay? Vote blue, turn up, show up to the poll, register to vote. But I feel like we got this one in the tub. All we got to do right, so far. But in order for us to actually take the dub, we have to vote. So, hey, at the end of the day, I hope you guys liked the video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'm out.